After four blog posts were released just two weeks ago, the Hytale team shares with us another blog post on December 12th, and man, it's a good one. Today, we will be going over everything said in that blog post, as well as things that you may have missed while you were reading it. With that being said, my name is Van Dyer, and let's get right into the video. As always, we'd like to welcome you over to our Discord, where you can join in with the largest Hytale community discussing all things Hytale. We host many different community events, with our upcoming artwork events being hosted extremely soon, and if you're interested in a chance of winning a month of Discord Nitro, the link is in the description down below. Starting the progress update blog post, the Hytale team starts by saying, Hi! At the end of November, we published our first progress update, a small roundup of recent development work that included new biomes, farming, and some new creatures. In this post, we're going to give you a glimpse at some of the progress that we've made since, including existing changes to the scope and structures of Adventure Mode. We hope that these updates will become a natural way that we communicate, and we're excited to reveal more of what we've been working on. First off, however, we want to say thank you again to the Hytale community. Your understanding response to our most recent development update has meant a lot to all of us, and your excitement about our first gameplay clip, glimpsed at the end of the graphics update post, was great to see. It can be really nerve-wracking to reveal parts of the game before they're done, but your response has given us confidence that this new approach is the right one. However, please do continue to bear in mind that everything we're showing in these posts is work in progress and subject to change. This week marks one year since the announcements of Hytale. The journey we've been on since has been exciting, challenging, even life-changing, and we owe all of that to the community. Whether you watched the trailer posted about us, made a video, or sent us your fan arts, your enthusiasm has given us the chance to become better developers and to raise the bar for a project that we're deeply passionate about. Now, on with the progress update, starting with a closer look at one particular part of that gameplay clip. In case you missed it, here's the gameplay clip that we first published in our graphics update post. Many of you noted the kill counts that appeared in the top right of the screen after the combat encounter began. This is a basic example of Hytale's objective system, which plays an essential role in your journey through Adventure Mode. The objective system allows us to set specific goals for the player when certain conditions are met. As a basic example, an objective may be established when a player enters a particular location, such as the ruins in the gameplay clip. Encounter prefabs like this feature hand-designed architecture and gameplay scenarios, structured challenges that complement the freeform exploration that you'll otherwise be engaged in. In other cases, location-based objectives may be attached to points of interest and have a random element, such as the Chork Camp above. In this case, the exact roster of enemies that you'll face will vary, but the objective system will still provide you with a sense of what you need to do to succeed. For more on how prefabs are built and incorporated into our world gen systems, check out the blog post from earlier in the year. Sometimes, an objective might be tied to an item, like a treasure map or a bounty note, that sends you off in pursuit of a specific foe. Targets can be one-off missions, or they can form chains that require you to succeed at multiple stages of a challenge before receiving your reward. We'll go into more detail about the kinds of rewards that objectives will provide in Adventure Mode in the future, but loot and faction reputation are both likely reasons for you to seek out these specialized tasks. The Hytale team then explains very deeply how the objective system will work based on the location of a player. As with many parts of Hytale, our goal is for the system to be fully extensible. Server operators will be able to use it to structure their own challenges, and the system is fully compatible with cooperative play. Location-based objectives can be joined by any player who happens to be in the right area. 
In this image that they provide, we can see so much stuff going on. Still, the main thing we see is the new items in the slot bars. In the first slot, for example, we see what looks to be a steel axe. In the second slot, we do see a bow, but we don't see any other arrows to go along in any of the other slots. But we assume the character plans on using it as a weapon of attack. In the third slot, we see a potion, which seems to be a different size than the other potions that we've seen in the gameplay footage. Maybe this potion lasts longer, or maybe gives more health, or has some extra side effects that we don't know of yet. What interesting effects could these potions provide? Give us your educated guesses in the comments down below. Next in the fourth slot, we see what looks to be a copper pickaxe, and speaking of copper, it seems the character is also wearing copper gloves and a copper helmet. Following that, we see six blocks of dirt in slot 5, and what looks to be a piece of vegetation in slot 6, which might be either wheat or barley. In slot 7, we do see a kebab. We're unsure of the types of food that are on the kebab itself, but it sure does look tasty. Finally, in slot 8, we see five stacked cooked chicken legs. You can also see the objective on the top right of the screen, telling the character to kill two chorks as he ventures towards the chork camp. Next, the Hytel team shares with us how progression will work in zones 1, 2, and 3. Here is the picture they provided, and here is what the team had to say. Over the last few weeks, we've started testing a series of changes to Adventure Mode structure. In the past, we conceived of Adventure Mode as a journey through the zones in sequential order. So by the time you reach Zone 3, you'd be more powerful and better equipped than you were when you first set foot in Zone 1. We are rethinking this approach to encourage a less linear progression path. Now, the first three zones each contain content at multiple tiers of difficulty, along with appropriately scaling resources and rewards. This means that it's possible for your adventure to start in Zone 1, 2, or 3. We haven't settled on whether this will be random or a matter of player choice, and even the zone names themselves are not yet finalized. No matter where your journey begins, you'll have the option of establishing yourself in your starting region, moving to another zone, or even roaming between them. Whatever you decide, you'll be able to find content appropriate to your power level. In the shot above, you can see a view of Zone 2 showing multiple different biomes. You can probably tell which areas are likely to offer a more substantial challenge. The tier of a particular area affects the type of prefabs you'll find there. Above, you can see a basic ruin in Zone 2, content appropriate for a player who's just starting out on their journey. So what's the Hytale team trying to tell us? Generally speaking, the first three zones will be available for the player to spawn in, whether that will be willingly or randomly. Furthermore, each zone has its own biomes as well as difficulty progression. As you can see from this image, we're shown a small, crumbling fortress with a minimal amount of enemies standing guard. The Hytale team proceeds to show us the same fortress concept, but enlarged to represent a higher tier version of it. This is what they had to say. Here's a higher tier version of the same concept. Players who want to take on the undead occupants of this crumbling fortress will need to be well prepared. As encounters increase in complexity, so do the NPCs that inhabit them. While we've previously explored the concept of enemy classes, you can check out an example of Chork subtypes in this blog from last year, we've been working on expanding this with a tier system of its own. Certain powerful enemy types will now only occur in higher tier encounters. Other classes may appear in multiple tiers, but level up as they do so. Continuing on, we're given a screenshot containing a character throwing what seems to be a golden spear at an undead mage, and we're anxiously waiting to see what else we may encounter in these crumbling fortresses. In regards to the image, the Hytale team informs us that, in this screenshot, the player is fighting an undead mage. These are slightly more advanced than your basic skeleton. You won't encounter them at the lowest tier of difficulty, but they're not the deadliest foe you'll encounter either. The team then enlightens us with the evolution of the dungeon tiers by giving us another image of the same type of skeleton in a higher tier dungeon. They go on to say, here's what you may encounter at a higher tier of difficulty. A powerful variant of the same fundamental mage archetype, with a more formidable appearance to match. Luckily, the player in the shot has had some equipment upgrades too. These changes are still being tested by the team, but we're excited by the potential for the system to add variety and give players an excellent choice over the direction that they take at the beginning of their adventure. 
The next step is to finish implementing similar content upgrades in Zones 1 and 3, which will include new prefabs and new NPC types for a variety of factions, including Trorks and Outlanders. Expect to hear more about this in a future progress update. So to confirm, there will be different tiers for both Trorks and Outlanders as well, corresponding with their placement in each zone. And while we're on the subject of NPCs, Hytale shows us two new creatures that we have yet to see in the game, one being an airy looking aquatic fish, speculated to be a piranha, and what they call a once noble chicken, which looks to have a pitchfork that was stuck into its back. This is what the Hytale team has to say about both of these new creatures that they introduced. In the distant regions of Orbis, a new aquatic menace has emerged, complete with eerie bioluminescent markings. Following that, in our last progress update, we showed how the curse of undeath could produce some genuinely twisted beings. However, not every victim of this malign magic is quite so monstrous. Alas, noble chicken, even in death you serve, or are served as the case may be. The Hytale team wraps up the blog post with another humble thank you to the community. They also let us know that there will be not much information over the holidays, meaning we can expect the next blog post in January sometime. That's right, the next blog post will be released in January, and that's just about a month away. Anyways, that wraps up today's video on the December 12th progress update blog post. You can follow us on our Twitter page, at Hytale News YouTube, to stay up to date with all things Hytale, and you know precisely when a new video will drop. With that being said, we hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, make sure to leave a like on the video to show your support, and don't forget to subscribe as well. We also have the largest and most active Discord server regarding all things Hytale, so feel free to hop in and join the discussion today. Help us decide future video topics and much, much, much more. You can find the Discord link in the description of any of our videos. And again, my name is Van Dyer, and this has been Hytale News. Peace!